A very good morning to you. Welcome to Squawkbox. These are your headlines. South Africa's parliament speaker considers allowing a no-confidence vote on President Zuma as his new finance minister talks of radical reforms to redistribute wealth. South Africa's president, Jacob Zuma, is facing pressure to resign. The speaker of the parliament says she will consider a request to hold a vote of no confidence in the president. Meanwhile, street demonstrations against Zuma are expected this week. It follows a controversial late night cabinet reshuffle last week in which Zuma sacked his respected finance minister, Pravin Gordon. Let's uh, get some analysis from Peter Atar Montaldo on this one. But first of all, we'll get to uh, Bronwyn Nielsen, who has been following events and is live from Joburg. Bronwyn, thank you very much indeed. Look, I mean, just tell us what's going on, what the latest is. It's a very quick moving story. It is a quick moving story indeed, and it is Black Monday here in South Africa. South Africans are out in hordes on the streets today, dressed in black in protest to the aggressive cabinet reshuffle that we saw, as you said, Steve, on a Thursday, late Thursday night last week. Subsequent to the cabinet reshuffle, the 10 new ministers and 10 deputy ministers, new deputy ministers, have been sworn in without any incident in South Africa. Political parties, however, opposition political parties are rallying, and as you said, calling for a vote of no confidence in President Jacob Zuma and also uh, the alternative obviously is an impeachment of the president. The Speaker of the National Assembly has been called back from a working trip in Bangladesh to potentially convene an early sitting of Parliament. The next scheduled meeting was set only for the 8th of May. I'm in Lutuli House tomorrow. I sleep in Cape Town tomorrow night. Tuesday, I'm in the office, the consultation starts. I will, of course, have already taken advantage of whatever snippets of time with the DP, uh, but it, that's something that happens better when I am in parliament and we can uh, consult. It takes definitely at least a few days. Who is South Africa's new finance minister now? Malusi Gigaba, at 46 years of age, is South Africa's youngest finance minister ever. He has no financial experience. We are committed to maintaining an investment grade credit rating for South Africa by all credible ratings agencies globally. This is important for ensuring South Africa's access to investment capital at a fair and manageable interest rate, to borrow for productive investments to improve our economic competitiveness. The, the rating agencies are saying that any policy made around these state-owned enterprises could bring us to sub-investment grade. Government has been and will remain committed to a measured fiscal consolidation that stabilizes the rise in public debt. It will remain committed to getting the best possible value for money in the use of public resources. We were just saying it feels a little bit like Groundhog Day to be back here. I think I was here straight after Nenegate when uh, uh, President Zuma fired then Finance Minister Nene on the, uh, 10th of, uh, on, on the 10th of December when I was here uh, in 2015. I think the problem we have for the markets is the markets didn't see this coming. They assumed this was impossible, basically, that after Nenegate, uh, Zuma was constrained, that he didn't have the political power to do this. But he's undertaking a very calculated, very clever move here. When we talk about the rating going into junk territory, do you think that's a possibility? I think it's a very strong possibility, but mainly on the removal of Privyn Gordon. Um, so I think the, the whole point there is that someone was removed from being a finance minister because they were anti-corruption. Does radical economic transformation mean redistribution and black empowerment as well for well, redistribution of wealth away from the holders of capital to the rest of the community? Because if it does, regardless of the merits of it, that is not going to be a positive sign for international capital flows into the country from which it, it depends on so much. Well, the problem is I have no clue what radical economic transformation is. I've spent the last five years rooting around the ANC trying to find out. No one can properly define this term. Over 20 years of managing the, the nation's fiscus, the ANC has exercised restraint. Bronwyn Nielsen has been following this story from the very beginning. She joins us live in Johannesburg now. Bronwyn, one of the big questions investors will have as they try to assess the next stages here, whether there is a risk for some instability in the country. What are you expecting with the protests that have been planned for this week? People are asking, is our new finance minister a safe pair of hands? 
Uh, is he a Zuma loyalist? Well, we know he's a Zuma loyalist, but is he going to give President Jacob Zuma access to the country's purse strings? Interestingly, I think we've got to take into account that uh, Praveen Gordon, the former finance minister, was told or heard that he had been fired through the media. He didn't actually get a call. He heard this through the wires. And that just gives you the sense of the breakdown in communication that is taking place at the moment. Is there a fear there will be capital flight on the back of the latest issues, the latest concerns politically? The market commentators, certainly here on, on home ground, are saying that we haven't seen the worst of it, the worst of it at, the, at this stage. Just listening to Peter Attard Montalto a moment ago, saying that they're downgrading growth forecasts for the country already from 1.1% this year to 0.2% really gives you an indication of the sense of fear surrounding South, Africans, South Africa's institutions and certainly the safety of Treasury. One more point is that former South African Finance Minister Praveen Gordon himself is calling for mass mobilization. Now this is radical, I mean he is saying that individual voices don't carry weight, that organized voices will be able to affect change. This is a man that is well respected and who has fought so hard to keep South Africa on the right growth trajectory and also to prevent a ratings downgrade. Can issues like this um, upset that scenario as well? Can they be a catalyst, can they be a domino for wider concerns? Well, there's still a lot of debt in many emerging markets. My, my concern would be if interest rates rise more aggressively, uh, the debt servicing costs become more onerous. We do not seek to implement a reckless ledge in a particular direction. We will stay the course in terms of the fiscal policy stance approved by government. The JEC uh, did close lower on Friday, but it was up on the week. And the local market has been incredibly resilient so far. And some believe this is because of the flood of money that is hitting emerging markets. If we could just take a quick look at what the sectors are doing, we're seeing that banks are flat, but they continue to be under pressure. Now, banks dropped 6% on Friday in the wake of the cabinet reshuffle, bringing the losses to the week to 10%. Let's take a look at uh, some of the stocks which are... Um showing most exposure to the South African uh, fallout politically of uh, Pravin Gordon's uh, sacking and that of other ministers as well. Uh, old mutual shares, um, well, looking pretty firm actually, up 0.3 of 1%. Investec down a half of 1%. Steinhoff uh, over in Germany, the worst affected. The new finance minister has met very, very quickly this weekend. On Saturday, he engaged with both Moody's and Fitch key rating agencies. As you will know, South Africa has been staving off a ratings downgrade for some 15 months now. Fitch has said these two decisions, alongside any other policy decisions, could see them revising the sovereign rating of South Africa. Bad times or uncertain times create opportunities. But at the end of the day, in order to be able to realize these opportunities, the country needs to come together. We can't have an economic meltdown and still find the opportunities and grow over time. So I think they're intertwined. So the medium-term objective of South Africa has to be a much better economy, more jobs, and space for all. And if we don't get there, doesn't matter what the opportunities are, we're going to get lost. New finance minister, old problems will be heading out to Johannesburg to find out what comes next in the South African sagas. So, so we've got uh, nine cabinet ministers having been fired, uh, and, and Mr. Zuma now facing a lot of pressure to resign. Absolutely, Louisa, and 10 new ministers and 10 new deputy ministers having been sworn in on Thursday evening in this aggressive shuffle, cabinet reshuffle that has taken the market, both local and international, completely by surprise. The local unit is currently falling. We're an hour and 20 minutes into local trade. Earlier into European programming, we heard uh, Peter Attard Montalto from Namura International saying that his interpretation of radical economic transformation is the aggressive redistribution of land, although he wasn't quite clear on this term. And I think this is potentially what is going to spook market. Uh, we are seeing protests, uh, fast and furious coming through, labor, business, government, civil organizations, academia coming to the fore. 
and Friday, April the 7th, has been touted as D-Day. Why do you think we've seen such a, a large reaction in, uh, in various asset classes? I'm also looking at the RAND once again extending losses this morning in, in very volatile trade off by more than one and a half percent now. I think uh, investors are going to be very cautious, uh, a fundamentally cautious story. Uh, we're definitely being cautious looking ahead. Uh, this week, as you know, and as you mentioned, there's this possibility of doing this no-confidence vote. So theoretically, if all opposition MPs were to vote against uh, President Zuma, they would need only 50 MPs from the ANC's 249. New Finance Minister Madhusi Kikaba has vowed to make changes at National Treasury. Changes include using the state's 500 billion rand procurement bill to support black, black enterprises. At his maiden press briefing on Saturday, Gigaba said government was unapologetic about its commitment to radical economic transformation. People have been urged to wear black. To give us a view of uh, the march on the streets of Tswane, we are now joined by Aviu Mdila. Uh, give us an update with regard to uh, what the latest developments are on the ground. Hi, Gugu. Hi, Gugu. I'm in Pretoria at the moment, Pretoria Chess Square, where protesters from various sects of life have gathered here, have braved the scorching sun effectively to gum and protest against the president's cabinet reshuffle and also calling for his removal effectively. The plan is to stay here every day outside National Treasury and hoping that their call will be heard. That's probably the next three to four weeks are going to be very important for global markets. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we have very different dynamics that can come and go. Who knows what we'll be talking about this time next week. But don't let politics play too much on your investment strategy and what you're trying to achieve. Following Friday's removal of South Africa's finance minister, the average yield spread of South African foreign or sovereign bonds over U.S. Treasuries rose by three basis points to 272 basis points, the highest level seen since early January this year. As the rand continues to slide against major currencies and the political noise in the micro outlook intensifies, we discuss the impact on the bond market space. There will be political repercussions to the fact uh, that Zuma has taken this, uh, has done this cabinet reshuffle, and there is going to be pushback against it either within the ANC or within Parliament.